I got it. I'm going to get tangled up. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. It's Val and Roy um, coming to you from our flameworking studio. So we're in a little uh, different room than we normally are in. But Val's going to do some basic uh, torch work stuff. So just an introduction to yeah, kind of. some of the, I guess, this like a, I don't, we're not really doing class stuff, but we're doing um, kind of how to maybe get started if you're interested in flame working. So <clears throat> we have a couple options here. Um, this actually setup is the one that we do teach a lot of our beginning classes on. And, and one of the reasons too is, I think is because it's, it's such a beginner friendly way to start. I mean, it's, you know, it's a small setup. It, it doesn't require excessive, you know, ventilation or um, it, it, it's just real user friendly. A lot, a lot of the um, people who start can do this in, in their home, I mean, real easily. I mean, this you can too, but this requires tanks and regulators and a bigger ventilation system. And this one, like I said, is just kind of a, a, a sweet way to start. And the, the beauty of it is that it is very hot. So you can do a lot of things in it. it it tends to be a little loud, and um, so I don't often do demos on it because sometimes we talk. Yeah, it's a lot like to so. talk, well, you know, he likes to talk a lot, yeah. but you know. Um, but it, it, this one I'll do a demo on, and but this one is a, a Carlisle, and, and it's called a Hellcat, and it does have an oxygen and a propane feed, so it, it does have um, more firepower. So we can do some bigger things quicker and all that. And there's some other reasons that you might want a bigger torch. But to just start out, this one is, is sweet. This is the way, I mean, I think I worked on this one for four or five years when I first started. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of people don't yeah. go beyond that torch, right? right? So. Exactly. Some people think this is, this is a little too much. And so um, you can do an awful lot of things. I mean, I, just depending on what, you, what ultimately your goal is and what you want, you could literally stay on this and make beads forever and, ne yeah. and never go any bigger. So, so um, what's the yeah. torch head on that? It's a hot this head, This is right? called a hot head, yes. And it is, um, you know, it is a little different than the ones that you get at the big box stores or yeah. the hardware stores. The, these holes that are drilled in it is part of the modification that makes it better for glass. It allows more oxygen to get into the flame, which some of those other commercial ones don't tend to have that. And so you can you can get a little bit of smoking or a little discoloration sometimes because of the lack of oxygen in those other flames. Although, you know, some people will try to use them and I think you can try it if you have one for sure. But and you were mentioning sorry, I mean jump in no, no. so this one also jump just in. has the one tank, right? So this yes. just this runs on um map gas, right? It's something that the, the, we don't sell at Delphi, right? I mean, obviously we sell the torch head, but right. we don't sell a tank of gas, something you'd have to pick up. Right, you have to be licensed store. to sell gas, and we don't really yeah, have any don't. other reason to sell it than, this, than the class. So, um, yeah, but anywhere. You call them big box stores. Yeah. I don't know, like Menards and Home Depot and those kinds of places. Mm. Yeah. Maybe we'll get sponsored. Maybe we'll get sponsored. Maybe. Maybe we'll get sponsored. Should I say, there's another one, too. Um, what, how many did I say? Three? Lowe's, Home Depot. Lowe's. Lowe's. That was the other. I figured I should put them all together because yeah, those are the three names. But this yeah. isn't propane, though, either, right? I mean, you can, you can buy no. small tanks of propane, but this is actually something called map gas. Yeah, there's some, say... there's some dispute on the fact that I, what, mm -hmm. I, what, this, what it is now and what it used to be, I, and I, to be honest with you, have not followed yeah. it exclusively or uh, um, intently, so I don't really know, but... Um, the, this used to be the, a brazing fuel, which then in my, in my knowledge of what I've been told is burns a little hotter and a little cleaner than That's propane. What, I heard the same thing. Now, yeah. I know there was something years ago where the map gas sold out or somebody took it over. I don't know. I think there was a change in, in the make of it. So I don't know if it's any different than propane now. I know propane will work and it's a lot cheaper. But I also know people have a little more difficulties with certain colors by using the propane because it seems to be a little dirtier. But, but, but once again, you know, I always tell, I can tell people in class, if you have it, if you already have that other torch head and you have propane, give it a try. If you're okay with the results, great. If you're not, you know, you might want to go into a more specific torch head and the map gas. So, 
I was going to turn it on, and like I told you, I'm not going to use it because it's it's just a little loud. But I, I'll turn it on so you can, um, by turning it on, I mean light it. <laughs> hmm. um, so you can see what it's like because it does have a, a pretty nice flame and um, works really well for um, soft glass or like the 104 is kind of our glass of choice for glass bead making. Um, but it would also work with 90 or 96 if you wanted to, to melt in that. If you're going to do anything in the borosilicate realm or the Pyrex type, then you're going to need uh, more firepower. You're going to need one like this with an oxygen and a propane feed. So, so I just use a match and I'm just going to put my match up here. I'm going to turn my gas on and then... So That's always exciting. Yeah, so it's, it's a little loud, but it's got a really nice um, flame, and like I said, you can do a lot in it. And it's pretty clean little setup. Um, it's also what we do, we actually use this torch specifically for the blown ornaments, you know, because it has that nice big bushy flame, and it works much better than, than a hotter fire just because of the size of the flame. Would yeah. you like to set that over I will there set somewhere? That over Thank here you. somewhere out of your way. Thank you. Welcome. So then this next one is, like I told you, it's, it, this happens to be a Carlisle. There's lots of man manufacturers out there that I think are awesome. Um, this happens to be what we have here, which is a, a sweet little torch. Um, the glass we're using is going to be 104. This comes in this rod. Like I said, it's kind of the... Standard they call it glass. Ready to, is that like a kind of a yeah? Brand it's name, an Italian sort of, rod or? still. It's still, but it's made in other places too. So there's other countries that make it. Um, the mandrels here are stainless steel sticks, basically, and if you yeah, can see them, that. yeah, that they kind of look like sparklers, and that's because I've dipped them in uh, bead is release. That when you use this I actually use this bead release. There's many kinds. You know, yeah, if you ever want to know, I mean, there's, it's not a straightforward question when someone says, what one should I use? It depends on what you're doing. This one tends to be a pretty heavy duty one, so I could do some bigger things and it holds up really well. There's another one that a uh, manufacturer that makes one that actually crumbles real easily, but I actually like that one sometimes because the beads clean out much easier and they come off much so there's like a there's like a pro and con to every one so um, like I said if you're interested and you really want to know my opinion about what to use or what I like then you can send me an email <laughs> or they can message you oh we don't have our sign oh or gosh, they can uh, sign email it's facebook at yeah. delphiglass.com or they can always I mean, send us a message comment where? below, comment below, comment below. The other various. How many years has it been, and we still social media stuff? <laughs> okay, okay. So anyway, I dipped these um, in the bead release. And you just oh, let them man. air dry. Is that what you did, or the fly, the fly is back? I'm really sorry, but it's really a big, ugly one. Golly darn it! Turn on the torch. I'm sure yeah, the maybe I'm. Sure. Was, <laughs> well, I won't even tell you what I used to do when I worked in the garage because at night it became. Oh. Uh, yeah, I became uh, aerobic. Um, but you're right, if I light it, maybe it won't come near me, it might come near you, but... Thanks. Um, so, anyway, what was I saying? Okay, so the mandrels are dipped, and you need that. It's like, for those of you that are fusers, I mean, it's basically like kiln wash. You know, if I didn't have them coated, and the, the molten glass would weld to the hot steel, we'd never get anything off. So, um, so that has... <laughs> oh, sorry, it did that earlier. <laughs> yeah, wow, hopefully... Uh... Probably woke up a few people, <laughs> myself included. You know, it's, you know, well, I'll tell you about it later. But so anyway. you're turning on the gas different at different times, right? So you're lighting the yes. propane first. Yes. And, and then, yes. And then adding, adding in the oxygen. oxygen. So. Yes. I, yes. Okay. All right. So, um, so what, what we decided was that, or what Roy wanted me to do was make a bead first. And so we'll just make a bead and I'll just show you how I put the glass, melt the glass, how we wrap it around a mandrel and maybe do a little couple colors or decorate a little bit. And then, and then Kaylee wants a fish. I do. I love the fish. <laughs> so cute. we can do a little fish. And like I said, I'll try not, I don't think it'll take all that long, but, um, okay. 
Yeah, so we are, you know, Val's, you'll notice, are putting on some eye protection. I'm going to put on some eye protection. I think Kaylee might slide something in front of the lens, too. Yeah, so. this guy. But it won't do any, it won't do a difference until the uh, glass is mm -hmm. in the flame. So. If you see some of the purple come across it, so you can actually yeah. see Yeah. Well, if you want it, we can talk up. about it. So here's the, um, I, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to kind of tease this in here, because this flame is pretty hot. And so cold glass hot flame tends to cause thermal shock and which can kind of start popping so i sometimes just tease it in this flame a little bit just to get the end um, starting to glow but here if you can see i have my glasses and i can't see but you can see that orange soda flare now if kaylee brings up the can you see the difference mm -hmm. okay so that's what my glasses and roy's glasses do is they filter out that spectrum of light which makes it easier for us to see so I'm just heating a little glob on the end of my glass and also heating um, the mandrel. I come out of the flame and I hit it with, touch my hot glass to my mandrel, then I turn. I use what is molten and when it starts to get stiff, I stop and I pull, come right back in and let that kind of fire cut. If once it starts to get stiff, I keep yanking on it, I could break my bead release and I don't really want to do that because then I'd have to start over because once you get that bead release crumble melted into your glass you're not going to be able to get it out so I'm just kind of as I'm wrapping I'm sort of drawing that away so that I don't get this big fat rod stuck in that molten part so it's just a series of gathers until you get to the size that you may want your bead to be so this is Sometimes hard to keep talking because I'm paying attention yeah, to what I'm doing. Yeah. And this is it. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. You can't talk to them it. and make a beat uh, at no, the same I, time. I can't. I can't do that. But I, you know, what? I'm not going to make a huge beat. But I mean, I'm going. I'll go a little bigger. So if I want to go a little bigger, I just go to the end and add some around there. So when you say bigger, so you can make it longer or you could make it wider, fatter. right? Fatter or mm -hmm. thicker or whatever. Yep. So. yep. And at this point, you're, you're just trying to get volume on I'm there, just adding right? Mass. So you don't yes. really care not, about what nope. it looks like? Nope. Or... I'm doing it actually more, more strategic than people think. I mean, I'm, I'm placing the glass in places that I kind of want to help facilitate the shape I'm after, right? You know, yep. I mean, I'm not just going to put it all in one spot. I kind of moved it around. So I actually... I'm right-handed, so I change. If I have glass in my hand, I've always got glass in my right dominant hand. When I don't have glass in my hand, I'll switch my mandrel back to the other side. So once I have the mass on there, I'm just going to kind of heat it. And I don't want it to, you know, completely um, drip, but I need it soft enough to, to affect, you know. So this is a graphite paddle. The other side is a marble mold we use for making marbles and some other classes. But the other, the back side is a graphite paddles, which I like to use to help me shape. So I put a little heat in the bead, I come out, and then I, it's a light touch. I don't know if you can tell by the way my hand is, but I mean, it's not a pushing and prodding, and you, you don't want to do that, because that's another time you break the bead release. So when you shape, you know, my opinion of when you shape something is you let the glass get nice and soft and then you kind of suggest what you want it to do by by rolling it on the graphite whether you tip it one way or another or you know depending on what shape you want you can angle the paddle you know so if you just want it I can go down the center so you kind of establish maybe the shape you want and then you know if you want to be done you can be done if if you want to add another color or do something to it you know I would have probably not spent that much time shaping it but I can add another color um, is this color all right what color would you like I'd like that color it's kind of turquoise right yeah kind of. it's hard to tell with the purple glass the lens is on but maybe it's cyan blue is it better? no well, it's more turquoise it's more turquoise it is called actually turquoise I can't reach my bucket. Did I get it? You got it in there. Awesome. You want me to move it closer? Um, you could just, yeah, sit Sorry. it over here. I 
meant to move it. Thank you. So the bucket's got water in it, right? So if yeah, and here's to... my tendency too. I, you know, people have said this before on other videos that I've done um, that how hot I work because sometimes, you know, I, uh, I've I, said that about you many times. Yeah, you know, sh- <laughs> I. Um, I, I need it for soft glass, you know, sometimes I do the borosilicate, which requires a lot more firepower, and sometimes I um, forget, and I'm just blasting, and it can affect the colors. I saw it, it actually sh- struck this to a uh, uh, red on the end, so I just tweezered it off. So this, so if I could jump in real quick, so, I mean, Please that's do. one of the advantages to this type of torch is that you can adjust the amount of oxygen or the amount of propane, and you can get uh, the type of flame you're looking for, right? Whether it's right. In intensity or... Or, or the atmosphere or, or of the atmosphere, flame, right? when meaning it's more, more oxygen gas than or, oxygen, reducing or, or oxidizing, meaning more oxygen than gas. There's certain times and colors and situations that you might want to do that. Now, you know, I just sort of swirled some stuff on there, but, you know, you can leave it up if you want. If you don't, you can melt it in and then continue. I mean, Kaylee reminded me that we've done dots before and which is which is good, but um, but that's kind of the idea with dots too. You could put dots on there and you could either leave them in or you can or you can uh, you can either leave them up or you can melt them in. We've got some questions coming through. Patricia nice. is asking, how do you know where in the flame to hold the bead? Well, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, I hold it in this particular torch. This one has these candles. We call them candles down here. And so they will say that the hottest part of this torch is probably about an inch or two, a couple inches above the candles. I mean, that's about where I want to be, maybe inch and a half. Um, it's an interesting thing about a flame because right here is the hottest part. You can see how quickly it glowed, or maybe you can't. But And then the further out you go, the cooler it gets. So there are times that I might be out here intentionally just to keep the bead warm while I'm looking for a piece of glass or doing something. Because once you start this soft glass bead making process, I can't just you know, set it over here and fiddle around over here for a couple of minutes and then come back. The only reason I could stay out as long as I did was because that was carrying a lot of heat to start with. So if I can put it back in and glow it up within a couple, three seconds, then it didn't get too cold. If I leave it out here for 30 seconds and then put it back in, it's very possible that 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 temperature might have decreased enough in that glass that I'd blow it up. I'd thermal shock it by coming back in here. So, you know, once you start, you just got to be a little careful keeping things um, keeping things warm. And when I say warm, you know, this is one of the biggest things for people beginning is, you know, they keep it down here too long, it starts to get orange, then it starts to get molten, then it starts to start to drip or move, and then you get really uncomfortable. So once I don't need it to be soft and moving, I don't let it get there because then it's just you're fighting with gravity, right? So this is plenty hot enough up here. See how quickly it glowed? So, you know, this can kind of keep it going, and I'm just going to get that little bump out of there. It was bugging me. And I'm going to be done with this one, I think. Is that okay with oh, yeah, everybody? Yeah. Well, you keep working. I've got more questions for you. So um, how much time do you anneal the bead? That's like a few. Fu- that's like fusing. You anneal it based on its size and mass. So depending on, you know, this size, I would probably anneal it for, I don't know, at least an hour and a half. Oh, do you have this one running? Yes. Yeah, I do. You want to put it in? Yeah, I'll put it in. So when I take it out to put it in the annealer, I mean, I'm just, I actually sometimes, if you want to get over here under the table, I actually hold it under here. Can you see the glow? Oh, yeah. So that's telling me it's still carrying good heat. So as long as when that glow is almost gone, then I stick it in my annealer. Just because if you put it in too soft, you'll pick up texture from the fiber blanket or, you know, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, because it, when it's still glowing, it's the, the it's, it means it's, it's moving. The still surface a bit, is right? soft. Yeah, yeah the surface is really soft. soft. Yeah. So, um. okay. So we've got a couple safety questions. So Sandy is saying, are there any addition or any safety issues you might want to add to your video? So I know we've kind of done the basics before. To um, what I don't even okay. So there were in glasses. Well, yeah. ventilation would be the other. Ventilation, thing. Ventilation, yeah. yeah. We have the big. Do they see the hood? 
it's on. <laughs> yeah. That's what we have going on. Yeah. A nice big hood. He can get it all in the frame. It's okay. Yeah. And that goes over our entire table. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's you know vented outside, obviously, so we have there, our air it, exchange that uh, replaces. Uh, oh, <laughs> replaces the, Sorry, but that fly, yeah, the fly I don't that's, like those uh, big flies. Dive bombing us. We, we thought we got rid of the fly earlier. But you should have seen us chasing it. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It took three of us. But three of us. We're but, like the fly wranglers. There, it's just a big old what fly. What else? That was You're your first. You're wearing cotton. I mean, that's another one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We try to wear non-flammable, you know, like natural uh, linen or cotton clothes, right? So something that... It's not going to melt. Fire extinguishers, two in this yeah, room. Fire yeah. extinguishers. There's one right back here, and there's one in that corner. So mm -hmm. that's always. The table. Yep. yep. Know how to use them. Yeah, yeah. We have um, uh, on the torch, uh, which you can't see here because you just see the torch, but there are uh, something called flashback arresters, which prevents, uh, the, like if there was a flame got into the hose, it prevents the flame from getting to the tanks. Traveling to the tanks, yeah. Um, so Debbie's wondering, doesn't the steel mandrel get hot? Do you need hand protection? Oh, no, God. that's a good question because people often don't realize because why would you? You don't do this kind of thing right out of the normal, yeah. right? Um, no, because stainless steel, um, same with glass, you know, they're, they're not conductors of heat. So I can get as close as I can get that this flame won't start to burn me. You know, I mean, I can get... So there is not going to be any heat traveling up the glass or the mandrel. So just where it's in the flame is what's going to be hot. As I'm scrolling down, Sandy's got a follow-up to her safety question. So if doing this inside your basement, are there any issues? I believe I'll have to do mine outside. Well, ventilation is yeah, probably your yeah. biggest issue. And like I said, you know, with a hothead, I, I, I firmly believe that you know, if you have a little bit of a clean air exchange, like you can open a window, maybe have a fan blowing to bring in the, I mean, it's very minimal. There, With that torch, there is some carbon monoxide, and there is any time you burn a fuel. And if you just find out what we're talking about is this hothead torch. Over yep, here that, this that torch there, yeah. So, um, so that's, like I told you, the real user-friendly one, and um, I wouldn't worry so much about ventilation. I, a basement, you know, it just it, that's a kind of, hard for me to answer because I don't know what kind of basement you have or what's down there. You know, you need to think about think about that. But I work in my basement at home. It's a walkout basement. But, and I have two windows on either side of my bench, but they're not open very often, but I do have a hood. So I have, you know, the, it is possible. the ventilation, but yeah, it's definitely possible. You just, you know, carbon monoxide detectors are actually very, um, inexpensive and so if you're gonna work like start working in a place then that you're not sure about buy one plug it in you know sit down light your torch do a few things if it goes off then you know you've got to get some clean air in there now you know this is the other thing about ventilation people think of it mostly as um, you know the fumes or the carbon dioxide or that kind of situation the other thing about ventilation, the other part of it can actually be what you're burning. So depending on how hot you're getting and what's emitting into the vapors due to the kind of heat you're applying to colorants and that type of thing, a lot of heavy metals in some of the colorants. Not so much soft glass. There is some in the reduction um, glass, but not so much soft glass, but more like the boro and all the colorants in that. And you do have to start being more careful about your ventilation at that point because now you've got two part. Now you've got carbon monoxide that you're dealing with that you need to make sure um, you're getting clean air exchange to offset that. And now you also have possibly um, emitting some of the metal that you're burning. So you have to be real careful about it. But once again, you know, just with the hot head or just as hot as we're getting with the soft glass and what's in it is probably more one part, you know, meaning your ventilation, your clean air and all that. So, so I just, while we were chatting, I just added um, some glass. So you're basically just like starting out like you did when you were doing a bead, right? Yeah, I mean, you got to start out with enough glass adding. to work with, right? I mean, you just got to start out with um, something to... Janice says, I always have trouble getting beads off the rod. Yeah. Any tips for that? 
Well, that could be. He gets me to do it. That, that's right. When I can't get him, I get Roy to do it. <laughs> or if I'm home. I mean, sometimes I do think that, and you can attest to this, Roy, because there have been so many times where I was positive I wouldn't, I couldn't get it off. Yeah. And you get them off. Get them so off. it's amazing, but sometimes I need vice grips. Yeah. Do you have a pair in here? Um, probably down underneath down there. Vice grips, or if not even vice grips, just um, pliers, you know, because sometimes it's really hard. You can't squeeze this tight enough to twist, to break the bead release without this turning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really hard, so you kind of need something to bite onto it. And... Um, so, but it can be the bead release too. This particular bead release that I'm using is really hard to get the mandals off. But like I said, the positive, the positive down in under that end. Oh, down and over here? And that tub down in the far, yeah. Oh, oh I see him. So the other thing is, that, you know, that, that it allows me to do big beads and not worry about crumbling the bead release by accident. So there's a, like I told you, there's some pros and cons, but... I would look at. Can your, you soak them right? I mean, sometimes you soak them in water. Does that help? The, I I wet them down because the of the um, of the uh, bead release has silica in it. So I always wet them down so that I don't worry about the powder and breathing it. Oh, yep. But I don't really, to be honest with you, think you it don't helps think that, that helps much. Any. No. So these are vice grips. If you're not familiar with what vice grips are like, right? So uh, the way these work is you clip, you tighten it down. You can clamp it right onto the. Um, right onto the bead, uh, to the mandrel. And then what, what helps too is sometimes if you have like a, you know those little like rubber pads that they mm -hmm. sell to help open a jar, the lid of a jar, and then grab the bead with that. So you're holding the, the um, mandrel with these vice grips and then using a little rubber pad to hold onto that. Uh, that's how I usually get them off. And then, then I do kind of a twist back and forth. Once you get that initial kind of break, then it, um, and then it usually comes off pretty good. Then you have to, continually twist and kind of pull, almost like you're unscrewing it, if that, that makes any sense. But and Hopefully that helps. And it, it helps to... But sometimes, to be honest, sometimes they're really um, tricky. They really can be stuck on there. If you mess around when you're making your bead and you really swirl it, which is why I don't often wrap in the flame, because um, it's you're just like yanking the gooey around, you know. Some people will put their... Put their um, put their glass in the flame, and then just leave their bead behind, and then just keep doing it this way. So as the glass melts, but as that does that, this your core bead starts to get hotter and hotter, and pretty soon it starts yanking around. And sometimes I do believe that you can, you know, get so much of a tappy situation pulling that you can lift the bead release underneath the glass and not really even know it. And if you do have a situation where your bead release, um, if there's a, a part of your stainless steel that touches the, the hot glass, it'll, you won't get it off without breaking it. Oh, I get it. So if you break the bead release, that's the, the risk because you have Underneath and you the, can't really see that yeah, you did. Yeah, expose the mandrel and then that sticks. That makes so sense. I was just playing around. This is uh, the metallic black, which mm. I kind of am a of a fan of. Make note of this too. So you're putting all of your hot glass on your rod holder too. So it's not yeah. just going right back on a table so you know you're grabbing the cool edge. Right. I do it so I know I'm, so I'm just going to, I put some dots in there and see how this metallic gets silver. Mm -hmm. This is kind of, uh, it's cool. So I'm just going to go in and sort of melt a little bit in between those dots and then I'm just going to go in and just kind of twist it a little bit. It's just a way to add, you know, just like a little bit of a pattern. What kind of a fish are you making? I don't know. It's going to be a... Uh, a whimsical fish? A whimsical. It's just what my desk is missing. Is it? <laughs> Keely was just saying she needs a fish, Oh, my gosh. Well, I just think oh. they're so cute. Here. Well, I was actually going to... This is another one of my demo tricks, is I was actually going to do... Um, just a one-sided fish because of the time. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I would used to do this a lot, and then glue a little magnet on the back, and then you oh, can. I remember. I have to go yeah, and you can kind of put them then in certain places and actually do something with it. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't always have to be just a bead, right? I mean, so I guess right. that's a nice way. Right. To right. Right. So sometimes, especially the sculptural stuff, people are like, well, why would I want a fish bead? But. Because of I guess cool. I just have to get over it, right? Yeah. 
just cute and fun. So it's just a little detail on that side, and it, when I flash it a little bit, you'll see it'll get a little bit more metallic. But I so I, I notice you're that. not like so like when you're melting in the, that metallic black. That I mean, you're getting the black hot, but you aren't getting the base all that super right, hot. Exactly. Right, exactly. So. You have to be careful. I mean, I'm keeping plenty of heat in that base bead, but once again, I don't want to chase it around because it's so molten with gravity. You know, I, I got my shape sort of established, so I don't really want to have to keep redoing it so I leave it you know I just kind of hit where I need to hit and then I'll, I'll try not to I'll try to remember to hit the the bottom part and the back part just to keep a little heat in that core bead but um, is this green yeah mm -hmm. so how I usually do it is whoops Oops. popped a little old glass and a hot flame yep I think you know it's it's up to people they can kind of figure out what sequence works best I tend to do a little whatever my decoration is on the body then I tend to go to the um, top fin and I just kind of stick it on there separate it a little bit might do another one next to it this is also a good thing why I, when I teach this I, I, I like to for people to practice dots because a lot of the decorative technique can come in um, with dots, you know. So, I'm yeah, just essentially, just, you're just putting big dots. I'm just on putting the, big dots yeah, on, on the, the top. On the top for the fins. So, I, I think that's the part that people do get a little when they see the finished piece. They they assume that like the fins and you know the all of that was some tricky Real, thing that yeah. you've done beforehand and then attached afterwards or right. So we're just doing kind of a simple little, so I did a dot for the back, that'll be like the back tail fin, like I forgot, I was just thinking I'm just doing oh, one. I, I was facing the other way. Yeah, I know. It might have been for a minute, but I changed my mind. Actually, you're right, it was. I was doing it that way intentionally, and then I thought, no, I like it better this way. So, okay, so that's that, and then it depends. You could do a little, you know, flipper, but see how, I, I, I'm not forgetting about them. They're there, but I'm also not, making them look like I want them to look yet because I'm not flattening them because once I flatten them then they're thin and they lose heat really quickly so I wait till I'm ready to um, maybe do them all at once because once I get those once I get those kind of flattened then I'm gonna really have to keep flashing them good because this is what I'm looking for so those are a little pair of mashers or some kind of tweezers, right? Mm -hmm. With uh... yeah. So that's. The... I'm assuming they're stainless steel. Is that these are stainless correct? steel? Yep, I used the bigger pair to you know to mash the bigger mass, and now I'm using the smaller pair to do the smaller things. Yeah, you did a demonstration making daffodils, right? Like uh, uh, before we've done that, and which I'm sure is in our. Either on our YouTube channel. They're back there too. Yeah. Both. Or, they're actually in both places. They're on our YouTube channel as well as the video section of our Facebook page. Oh my God. Want to watch the past video on that? You can find those there as well. That's why we keep Kaylee around. She knows all that stuff. So. So oh, yeah. I'm gonna do this. And then those are some tungsten um, picks or, or something. What do you? Yes. So that's the top fin. That's the side fin, or the tail fin, I'm sorry. So you're kind of shaping and pulling a little bit, creating some? Yeah, just creating what I hope to be more like a thin texture, right? I mean, yeah. see, I gotta get there. I don't know if I wanna do this. I don't know if you can see it very well or not. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. So then, you know, just time-wise, okay. So then we're going to do, I, I don't like, I did these, but I just don't um, like that long handle on that. So you made that stringer earlier, right? So. Right. Because Kaylee said we've done that before. So she, okay. So Sorry. this, um, you know, the. Don't forget that. I'm telling, talking to myself. Don't forget your fins now, girl. Don't forget the fins. Eat those up. 
Uh, now, some people may do this differently, but um, I mean, in a in a different sequence, you know. But I don't know. I find that I do it this way, and it works for me usually. So the white almost looks transparent in the, when yeah, it's yeah. in the flames. So. Yeah, it it is. It does go transparent until you can you can see. And I'm a little concerned about the thin. So hang on a minute. Because they're so thin, right? You're saying yeah. they cool off so quickly, yeah. especially compared to the mass. And, and the, the body, body yeah, right? the body is is more like an insulator, you know, because it's keeping the heat in there. So. Then you were just flattening, so same deal, right? You started with a dot that's going to be the eyeball, and then you yep. used the little brass stump. Is that what that's called? Uh, um, no. Yeah, the the brass paddle. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I forget what I'm doing. That's all right. Yeah, this is a brass stump shaper. So you can flatten the eye or not flatten the eye. I mean, I flatten it, and then I'm going to, um, it'll, it'll round back up once it starts to heat, you know. So I should, white, I should have a straight color. black, but I didn't pull a stringer. So this is, the, um, this is the silver black, which might not be the best eye, iris or pupil, but. I think it's going to be good. Be okay. And then. No, usually, depending on what you want for the lips, for the mouth, whatever. Whoa. Whoa. So are, are some colors more susceptible to I don't even know. Sometimes if it's colors, it just might be the individual rod sometimes uh -huh. is a little more. But, you know, in the, it's funny because in the... In the hot head, it, that doesn't happen near as often because it's not as hot. Oh. But the difference between this flame and this temperature of the glass is significant, you know. Yeah. So I don't know my hand <laughs> a little bit shaking. So you said you were concerned about fins. Will they break or? Yeah, they will. It, yeah, they will because they're. Um, They'll lose too much heat, and then I'll flash it in the in the hot fire, and it'll be a, like a thermal shock situation. It'll you know? break off just like yeah. that glass rod did. Yep, just like that. See, I'm not too much coffee, you guys. That looks good. So also notice that the red looks black, right? Mm -hmm. So yep, the red will look black until it comes, until it cools off a little bit. And if you were doing both sides, you would have just been working on both sides at the same time, correct? Right. right? I mean, you're not going to do one side, then do the other side. You're just, right. you would flip it back and forth between the two sides. Yeah, I'd be doing them both at the same time, which is kind of what's throwing me off a little bit because I was thinking it was, I forgot I was just doing one side. Or you didn't get the lip all the way around. That's nice. It's easier that way than trying to just do half and then stop. <laughs> I bet. So sometimes, you know, the more you play around, the more um, I might have to go back and do some detail, like redo my fins or... Just reshape them? Yeah, because once they get a lot of heat in them, they start to, they get hot, they start to kind of um, suck up again, right? So, so if I do this again, then I got to come in and sort of re-pinch. still pretty hot. Was it heating the fins faster than you wanted to or? Yeah, was because I was playing around too long on that stupid mouth that, you know, then I was heating everything else again. So, but I do want to melt that a little more just because I don't like it. Okay, so it's really kind of neat. See how it's kind of rounded up now? So what I do with, um, you could, I could use this, or I also have a pick, which is a little too thick. I guess I'll just use this one. So I'm going to sort of come in. I don't know. i got to heat it again. Oh, you put like a smile on Yeah. Him. He's a happy fish. He's got to be happy, right?
try some. Really, hey, you know, will you get me yeah. that um, that razor blade over there on the? Oh yeah. Oh, you want something? Because little... I do have a tool that um, you know is like a scalpel or a razor blade, but I don't quite have it over here at the moment. So, thank you. I don't know if I can is it down here? Oh, it's in one of my. Oh. That's a little, I think oh, yeah. that's a little better. You can see it better. Yeah. A little more delicate. Right. right. So, you know, and it's up to you, you, you know, you can, like I said, you could just, when you start doing this stuff, you could just play around forever. Yeah, when I'm not, you know, worried about time, that's, you know, it's not something you can sometimes really rush either. So I'm, I'm just kind of, um, Stretching this a little bit. Made a little top knot on him. Oh, yeah, so no, so you can like I said, once you get the components, as long as you kinda keep realizing you gotta keep heating things, you can go in and sort of change things a bit. I could pull this down a little bit if I can there. I don't know what kind of fish this is, but. Mm -hmm. But you know it's fish. Do you? I don't know. I think you do. But it looks funny when the, but when the um, red turns back, or the black turns back red, you'll be able to tell that's a mouth. But anyway, pretty lame. But anyhow, that's the idea, right? Looks great. We'll post it when it, because when, when cold. yeah, when it's cold. Yeah, we'll have to put it in the back, annealer and. Okay, so I know somebody asked earlier, so on a bead that size, about how long would you put that one in for? Um, I would probably, on that one, and, and, you know, and it could be overkill because I kind of think you should, you know, realistically try to assess what you think for the mass and, and then add mm -hmm. to it, you know, just to be sure. So I would say two hours for that one. Okay. I mean, maybe, you know, that's probably overkill. It's not that big, but... It's better be safe than... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, well, more questions? We good? No, I think we're, we're good. good. Wow. Okay, well... We'll be sure to post it when we're Yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining yeah, us today. Thanks. Yep. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks, I think. Yep, yep. So, send us... talk stress tester. That's what we said we were Oh, do. okay. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, be really great. Yeah. Right.